to another video tutorial. This time we will be attempting to create a student profile page for your online school using the elements available in the Drive editor. This way you can offer your students the possibility to have and customize their own profile page. So whenever they want to update something regarding their profile information, they will be able to do it by themselves. So the way to do this is with the help of the user profile element along with some other elements and options available in the Drive editor. Now first things first, we will be creating two pages that we are going to customize from scratch. One will be my profile page where the students can see their details such as name, email, WordPress username and on this page I will be using dynamic text that basically pulls in the data from the WordPress user profile. The second page will be the edit profile page on which we will use the user profile element but I'm going to come back to that one later after we customize the my profile page. So let's just give this page a title and launch it with Drive Architect. I'm going to go with the completely blank page to which I'm going to add a block element. Now here feel free to use whatever blocks and elements you would like in order to fully customize your page to reflect your brand and your website. Okay, so I've made some changes right here and as I've said, the My Profile page will be the page where the logged in users can view their information. And this can be easily achieved with the help of dynamic information. So every field can be added as a text element that will draw data from the WordPress user profile. So let me just add a columns element right here, select a two columns type of layout and then add text elements to each of my columns. Okay, so now in the first column, I'm going to manually insert static text. So this one will not change regardless of the user. And here in the right side, I'm going to use dynamic data to display the corresponding information for each logged in user. So I'm just going to duplicate the text several times for each of the information that I want to add. Let's say first name, then last name. WordPress username. Okay, so now if I want to display the data for the first name, I just have to select the already existing text right here, then go here to the dynamic text option, select my source, which in this case is going to be user data. And then from this drop down list, let's make sure we select the same option that corresponds to what I have here in the first column, which is first name. So pick WordPress user first name and click on insert. And as simple as that, the system has pulled the information from my WordPress user account and has displayed my name right here. Now let's do the same for each of the available column names. Okay, so I've managed to insert the dynamic data in each of my columns. It's very important to keep in mind here that you need to use dynamic data from here if you want to correctly display the information and contact details for each user. What I'm also going to do next is add a button which says edit my profile. And here I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be linking the edit my profile page that I'm going to be creating after I save my work. So all the users clicking on this button will be redirected to the second page that I've created on which the user profile element allows them to edit their account information. So let's just save the work for now and create the second page. Okay, so you can see here that my profile page is currently a draft, so I haven't published it yet. I'm going to be doing that after I link my button to the second page that I'm creating just now. Okay, so I've named my page. Now let's launch it with Drive Architect. I'm gonna go once more for the same block element that I've used on the My Profile page. This one. Now let's just remove all the information from here as I'm gonna be adding a completely new element right next to my image. And this time, let's open the right sidebar list of elements and look for the user profile one. Okay, I'm going to select one that already has some of the fields that I've added in my previous page. So let's just go with this one. And now what I need to do is make sure that the information that I have here matches the exact information that I have added in the My Profile page. So over there I had the username, first name, last name and the website field. So what I need to do now is remove the ones that cannot be found in the My Profile page. So it's this one from here, the nickname and the email, and just add a new one 
for the website field. Okay. Now, if you want here, you can also add a back to my profile button, which would link to the my profile page, but this is entirely up to you. If you want to give the users the possibility to quickly go back to that page. Now with these two pages set, you can go ahead and save your work and publish both of them. Okay. Let's just publish this one. And now let's edit once more the my profile page, because now we can link this button to the edit my profile page that we've just set up and published. So for that, click on the button element and here in the target URL, simply look up your newly created page. When this is done, you can go ahead and save your work and don't forget to publish this page as well. Now with this setup, there's one more thing you can do here, and that is to add an item to the Thrive Apprentice menu, which links to the My Profile page. And we can make this menu item visible only for the logged in users. So for that, let's go to the appearance section of our WordPress admin dashboard and click on menus. And now here, make sure that you have Thrive Apprentice menu selected. I'm also going to link here an article that will help you set up your first menu. If you don't know how to do that yet, then make sure it's selected. And then here in this left sidebar, you will have to make sure the pages section is the one that's selected and expanded. And here click on the my profile page, click on add to menu. And now we are making sure that any visitor who is seeing this menu item will not be able to access it unless that visitor is also logged in. So for that, expand this my profile section and here in the show when dropdown list, select logged in. So what we've done now is that we've managed to add the my profile page to our Thrive Apprentice menu as a menu item and it will be visible in the menu structure. Now let's just save the menu. And the only thing left to do now is to make sure that your online school has the right menu applied to it. And that can be done from your Thrive Apprentice design section. So here in the Thrive dashboard, go access your Thrive Apprentice, then open the design section, then look for your active design, the one that is applied to your online school, click on edit, and then start the wizard, go to the menu section, and simply make sure you select here the Thrive Apprentice menu that you've worked on. And that's pretty much it. All the logged in users of my site will be able to see the my profile option in their menu, which will take them to the my profile page where they can sort out the details of their account. So if they want to change some information, they can simply click on the edit profile button and this will allow them to do the necessary changes. Now my Thrive Apprentice menu did not have many items. I've only added the my profile menu item, but as you can see, this is visible to me because I'm an already logged in user. And if I click here, I'm going to be taken directly to the my profile information. Whenever I want to edit it, I click on the edit my profile button. And now I'm able to change various information available here. Now, I really hope this tutorial was useful to you. Make sure to check out other videos of this type available in our knowledge base if you need help with various Thrive teams, features and products. <laughs>